this tutorial, you get to learn how to perform pangenome analysis on a bacterial genomes. And you begin by first getting to know the meaning of the term pangenome. You also get to know the importance of pangenome analysis and the available tools that can be used to perform it. And in the lab session, you get to learn how to perform the pangenome analysis using the RORI software. You also get to know the PC requirements you need in order to perform this analysis. And then you follow my instructions on setting up the analysis environment, which will involve installation and configuration of the software. You also get to download genomes from the NCBI dataset, and these genomes will be, pro will be annotated using the PROCA software to generate GFF files. The GFF files will serve as input for the RORI software, and these GFF files will be aggregated into a single folder, and then the pangenome analysis will finally be performed. And then we interpret the results that we get. The term pangenome was coined by a very tetelin and colleagues and refers to the pool of genes common or different among multiple strains of a species. Pangenome analysis enables us to understand the genome diversity, population structure, and evolutionary changes in the strains under study. It also enables us to identify genes that are common or absent in all genomes under study or in some strains under study. It also enables us to identify species specific or strain specific genes. There are several tools available to perform pangenome analysis. And you can find this list in the book displayed on the screen. It's free to download and you can check it out. In this tutorial, we are going to use the tool Lori for the pangenome analysis. In order to follow this tutorial, you need to have a PC with a minimum of four CPUs. You also need to have a Linux environment. This is because the Rory software runs on Linux environments only. And so if you are using a Windows machine, they can choose to run a virtual Linux environment using VirtualBox, or you can enable the Windows the Linux subsystem command to use. You should also have Anaconda Package Manager installed. Instructions for installing Anaconda is given in the description box below. I've made a separate video for that. Now that we are set, Let's get to the lab session and start the work. So first of all, I'll open my command line. And then we begin by adding the channels to Anaconda. So we are going to add three channels. That's the R, Conda Forge, and then Bioconda channels. So we begin. So we start by adding the channels. So it's conda config add channels and we give the channel name. So we begin with R. We add the next channel, which is conda forge. And we add the last channel. which is Bioconda. You can confirm that these channels have been added by issuing the command. We 
right so now we have those three channels also added so we move to the next step which is to create an environment and install the software in that environment so we start so this is the command and then we add a dash n and then we give the environment name so we say pangenom then we can specify the softwares we want installed which are proca and then rory you separate them with a the space character so you'll be asked to confirm the installation and so you type yes that's y for short and then you hit the enter so installation will proceed and conda will download all the required packages so the software has been installed and so the next thing we do is to activate that environment and we will do that by issuing the command conda activate pangenom please note that if you are using an older version of anaconda then the command for activating might slightly change so you might have to check on the documentation online so we activate the environment and so after activating you notice that the word pangenom will also be displayed on the prompt so that is for it now from here on forward we are going to work in a particular directory so in my case i'm going to work in the desktop directory so i'll cd to the directory that directory which is desktop so let me clear the screen first then i'll cd to desktop so this is where i'll be working and this is where i will download all the data sets to and so you should make sure you also decide where you work and then cd to that okay the next step is to download the very plots.py scripts from github so let's go i want to show you where that page is so that you can check yourself so this is the page on github where you can download the scripts okay so here we go so on this page, we are interested in this script, wplus.py. So you click on it. And then, so in order to download a script, you first click on the raw tab here, the raw button. You click on it. And then you'll be sent to another page. And on this page, you download it. Now for me, I'm using a Firefox browser. So I'll have to right click and then click on save pages and then finally save it on my desktop now if you are using a different browser then the method for downloading or saving it might slightly change but in principle it is possible to do that so once you have downloaded and saved the script we are now ready to proceed with the next step now that is downloaded we can confirm using the ls so we have it downloaded so we are good to go to be able to run the script you need to also make sure you have satisfied the dependency and that is shown on the screen for you so you need to install When we come to the original page, you need to install these Python packages before you can run it. So now you go to the terminal again 
and install those Python packages. So let's start. So we have by default Anaconda also installs pip. That's what we are going to use to install the packages. So install pip install so we'll begin with numpy. So pip install and then the package name and then you also have add a user so this enables you to install packages without admin rights so let's install this one first okay so if you already have it installed on your system then you are going to have this message displayed okay so let's install the rest as well so pip install matplot lib Okay, so because I made an error miss error in the package name, I had this error message. So let's use the correct name. So this is the correct name. Okay, so I already have that one also installed. So let's install the other one. You can also install several packages at a go, but I wouldn't recommend that. Because if you install it at a go and there's an error message, it's difficult to track. So we do it one by one. So let's install the next one, which is matplotlib. Okay, so we are done with matplotlib. So we go to Seabone. Should have used the argument here. Okay, so that is also there. So let's do for the next one. Please note that if you don't have the require, if it's not installed, then it will download and install the packages for you. So let's do it for the next one, which is pandas. And now we install the final package, which is BioPython. Okay, so that has been installed successfully. Now let's clean the screen to make it nicer. So before we move to the next step, let's make a directory called sequences. And here we are going to download all the sequences that we'll use into this directory so let's confirm so we have it there so we'll download each of the sequences which is given here we have six strings and these are staphylococcus aureus strings and the download links of this genomes will also be given in the description box. So I will go to each of the download links and then download them from NCBI. So you are going to download each of them so there are six of them. So for each of the pages, you go there and on the page itself, you go to send to. 
and then you click file you click on faster formats and then you click on create file so you'll be asked to save the file and then you save it on desktop and then save it in the sequence directory you created and then we give it the name so in this one the name was vein f vein 521 string so it becomes vein 521 dot faster okay so we do it again for the other sequences we have it here you copy you come and paste And then you download this one is m48 and then you download it faster you create file so it's faster format for all the genomes so m48 dot faster make sure the dot faster is also included in the name it's very important okay so you do for the rest of the sequences until you have your six strings and now we proceed with the rest of the analysis so after you have downloaded all the six sequences you can confirm by issuing the ls command to see so we should have six sequences you can also do ls this command to count all the faster files and that gives us six so we have it down there. the next step is to create a gff the gff folder this folder will be used um, to upgrade all the gff files that we produce by Proca. Okay, so the next command now is to do the annotation, perform annotation using Proca. The reason why I want to perform annotation is that Rory accepts GFF files, and on the developer's webpage, it is recommended that the GFF files generated by Proca should be used. So that is why we use Proca. To perform the annotation and generate the GFF file. So we will start with the first one. So we have Proca, that's the command. I've made a separate video on how to perform annotation with Proca, so you can check that one out as well. Also, will be given in the description box below. So Proca, and you specify the CPUs. So I'm assuming that you have the number of CPU cores is four. And so we'll use this. If you have more than four, you can increase it to eight or whatever number you have. So to follow this tutorial, I'm just, just using four as an example. And then we specify the kingdom. Because it's a bacteria, we specify bacteria. And then we also issue a prefix. So this prefix is to let Proca um, create a directory of our choice. So our prefix is going to be vein521. So that means this directory is going to be created and then all the annotation for that strain will be placed in that directory. Let's also specify a local stack. This is used as an ID for the genome annotation so local stack and then we specify vein 521 and then finally we specify the sequence let me just decrease the font size so that you can see clearly okay so now finally we specify 
sequences. And then we specify the FASTA file, which was vim 521fasta So this becomes the command for doing the annotation for the v 521 string. So we specify this because this file can be found in the sequences directory. And so once we are done with this, we proceed with the annotation. So let's start. And so Proca will begin by performing the annotation here. And because we are using four CPUs, it might take a while to do it. So if you have several CPUs, then you can increase it and then you have a faster annotation process. So the annotation is complete. And so what we do is that we copy the GFF files. But first, let's do an ls to check that we have the files there. So ls v521. So we have these files there. And what we are interested in is this particular file here. So that's what we are going to use. So let me clear the screen first. So now we we'll copy that file. So to be cp v521 slash v521 dot g ff and then we copy it into the gff folder we can confirm by using gffs and then we get it so now once we are done with this we go again and this time we do it for the other strings so let's do it for the next string which is m for Eight. So we copy for it slash m for it dot gff. We copy to gffs as well. Now we do it for the next stream. Please note that the scripts for all these activities are available on my GitHub page and I'll put the link to it on the description box below. All right, so now all the annotations have been completed. And so we have the individual folders there. That is the annotated genomes, shelf, six of them. And so we've also copied the GFF files into the GFFS folder. So that's what we are going to use. So let's clear the screen first. And let's confirm that all the files have been placed in there. So we have them there. And so from here, it's time for Rory to take the wheels. So in order to use Rory, let's first test that Rory was installed successfully. So once you issue Rory, it gives you this help command. So it was installed successfully. Okay. So the next step is to perform the review using the GFF files that was given. And I repeat, um, the, uh, to, uh, the scripts, the commands for this tutorial are available on my GitHub page. So I'll leave the link in the description box for you to download, including 
the one for the rory as well so you can check it out okay so first to issue the rory command the first step is to issue this command so rory dash f and then we indicate where we want to save um, the results in terms of the directory name so let's say rory results so this directory will be created by Rory and then the result for the pangenome analysis will be placed in there. So the next is dash P, that's for processes. So we specify four. All the tutorial want to be uniform. So we specify four just as we did with broker. And then we have dash E, dash N, dash V. This allows Rory to also generate core genome alignment files that can be used for generating the trees so we also specify math t so once we are done with this then we specify where the gff files are and so we have gff star indicating that gff star dot gff indicating that we want all files ending with the gff in the gffs folder to be used and that is what we have there so now we proceed to enter the command and so you have this appearing indicating that it's working and here again depending on the number of cpus you specified um, the time might take it might take a while for it to complete so if you have more CPUs, then you can increase um, the CPUs and then the time will be shorter in terms of the execution. So you take note of that. So after this is complete, you have the directory being created. That's the Rory results, which is shown. Let me clear the screen. And in it you have this let me repeat again so you do an ls you have the row results and then the ls you ls into the row results itself you have all these files generated okay so you use the core gen alignment file for the rest of the activities and that is here so we are now going to generate the tree which will be in the network format using the fast tree command and so we do it by issuing this command fast tree and then we specify where the core gene alignment files which should be in the real results directory okay so after that we specify an output file the file that the tree will be saved in so let's put that one also in the real result. So we say this. We issue this rather, and then we indicate the output directory, which is let's say my tree dot network. And so after doing this, fast tree will compute the tree and save it there. Okay, so after the tree has been generated, we will now use the Python scripts that we downloaded to render it into an image. So first of all, let me clear the screen first. 
So we have the Rory plot to pi here. So we specify Python, we call Python, we specify the file. And then we specify the tree, which was saved in the very results, which was my tree at Snowic. But before we do that, we make sure that we indicate this argument. It's very important we indicate it. So we have Python Rory plus dot pi dash dash labels. So this will enable Python to add the names of the strings to it. And then we specify the network file. Aside the network file, we also specify the gen presence absence file, which will also be in the very results folder. So that is very results gen presence absence.csv. Okay, this is the file. So after we are done with that, we can hit enter and then let Python render the tree to an image for us. The image will automatically be saved for us. So it will be saved here S3. Those are the images. So let's move those images, image files to the real result as well just to make it organized. So we say move pangenom star dot png to Rory results. So it will be moved there. Now sometimes this image that was generated might have the font size is being small or you might want to customize the labels a bit. And so I would advise that you also save the image as an SVG format. This allows you to use tools like Inkscape to edit it later on. So let's repeat the command again that we use for rendering the image. And this time, what we do is that we add another argument to it and that is format svg okay so once we do this it will generate the svg format for us so let's say it's also generated so we can also do move pangenom star dot svg to worry results so we have those ones there so let's do an ls to find out the content in the raw results. So these are the files that are generated. So this is for the pangenome analysis. So now let's go and interpret the results in the classroom, shall we? So if you go to the desktop where we had our results is it you have this plots generated so before even talk about the plots let's look at one of the um, data here there's a gen presence absence csv file here which lets us know what genes are present for certain strings. So you have this CSV file here. Let me enlarge it for you so that we have this information here. We have the gen, we also have number of isolate. And we also have the individual strings or isolate also here. And so if you look at a particular gen, you can look at if it was present in some of the isolates or not by checking the isolates here. So if it's not present, then when you scroll down, let's pick one which is not. Yes, we will find some blanks there. So this blank here 
tells us that this particular group, this gene here, is absent in this particular isolate. Okay, so this will tell you a lot, will give you a lot of info about um, the predicted genes and which groups they belong to. Okay, so these informations are there. You can check them out and explore. Huh. Now let's go to the other plot. So when we come to this plot, we are going to explain the two plots here. That's the pangenom matrix and the pangenom pi. This particular one, as at the time of doing this tutorial, I couldn't get the interpretation from the developer's website. It was there, all right, an example was there, but the interpretation was not given in a clear manner. So I will skip this particular one and talk about this too. So the, the first one is a pangenom matrix. And this shows the gene clusters identified for each of the strains using the analytics. So you can check the clusters here, here. And then here, and it is these clusters that I also used to form the clades that you see here. We have clades here. So for each clade, the strains there are similar. And so if you look at this clade, you can see that M48 and V521 are similar in terms of um, their genomic or genetic makeup. The same can be applied to this as well. And you can visually check by studying the clusters here to find out that um, there are some things here that are similar, that are present in or shared among these two and might not probably be shared by the other strains. Now, aside the similarity of finding genes that are shared among the strains under study, you can also use this to um, determine or to check which genes are specific to a particular strain. And so we we'll take a look at an example of this where we have the gene cluster for R50. Okay. And the R50, we look at this particular cluster here, this genes here, and we can check and compare to the other strains, they are absent. So that tells you that there could be some strain specific genes present in R50. And so with a pangenom matrix, it's a good and useful tool when you want to check for um, similarity among particular strains of species or species under the study. The next is a pangenom pie chart. And so this pie chart um, gives us what you call the core and accessory genes. And that is um, what we generate. So the core genes, core genes are genes that are shared among all the strains. Now, if you look at where it separates the core genes into what we call the soft core and then the hard core. Hard core is more like the core. And so it uses some criteria which is found here to determine which um, genes are soft core. Now, soft core genes are genes that are shared by almost all the strains under study. And hard core are genes that are shared by all the strains under study. So, with this pie chart, you realize that 2,168 um, genes are core. And for the soft core, there is zero. Now, when we go to the accessory genes, which are here, Rory separates them further into shell and the cloud genes. Now accessory genes are genes that are shared by some of the strains or species under study. So here we have 1868 genes that are classified as being shell genes. And so this is also another way to identify or find more information about your strains or species under study. Aside these two plots that I've explained, the Rory also provides some additional functionalities that can be used to further understand your genomes under study. 
And so if you should go to their home page, the website, you can find more tutorials and more commands um, for probing deeper into your samples or isolate or genome sander study. Rory is also available on GitHub, so you can check that as well to find out more about how to use Rory. So that's all for today, and I'll see you in the next session. Bye-bye.